Every day, I have to run a batch of payments through my local bank. If I miss these payments, I get in really big trouble. So I need to make sure that I'm never late. So we're going to create this. It's an Internet of Things device that talks through the Wi-Fi to my production server. And it will always remind me of the status of my batch for the day. The colors will change as it gets closer to the batch time. And at batch time and after, it will play an audible alarm that gets increasingly more serious until I run my batch. As soon as the batch is run, it picks that up from the server and it responds accordingly. I'm Josh Whitman, CEO of Whitman Technological. This project was supposed to be a small project to just practice some of the skills we're going to need to work with some of the tools we're going to need to use. Um, it ended up being just a massive undertaking using most of the equipment that I have in order to produce uh, <laughs> a small object. I think I almost bit off more than I could chew and then editing it. I spent like a full week making the the sequence that just starts and goes all the way through the entire process. So that was uh, a little overwhelming, to be honest, but I'm getting better and better with Premiere. I even used a little After Effects, a little Blender, um, just a tiny bit when I made this video. Um, I made a reminder box that sits on the wall and changes color. <laughs> it's exactly time right now. It's 4.30 right now. That's really funny. Okay, let me take care of that because it's not going to stop beeping uh, until I do. So hold on. I'll be right back. Uh, let me walk you through it. And I'll get back with you after, um, after the box has been built. And we'll talk about what went wrong, what went well. And um, it should be pretty fun.
let's talk about some of the stuff that wasn't perfect with our project. Um, for starters, I didn't know that you needed a crystal and two capacitors to create that oscillator that drives the uh, processor cycles on the Atmega. I thought it could do it by itself, and it turns out it does have an oscillator built in, but it's not as accurate as using a quartz crystal. So um, I wasn't going to be able to talk to the ESP01, which uses serial communication, uh, without having a, an external crystal driving the Atmega. So I, uh, <laughs> I created a version of the board and put all the components on it, soldered it, tested everything, powered it up, and nothing happened. And that's when I discovered the crystal was an essential component. <laughs> I didn't know that the Atmega 328P ships without any kind of bootloader on it. Um, I had read that the P-PU version of the chip might have a bootloader pre-installed, but that's not the case. Those are the version that I have, and there was no bootloader, so I needed a way to bootload it, and you can't bootload it with just an Uno unless you have the crystals, which I didn't have. So when I ordered the crystals, I also ordered a, uh, a standalone bootloader. And that brings me to the next point of um, I didn't know that you could use a bootloader to program a chip off the Arduino. Um, so I've been putting the chips on an Arduino using there's a, a pin header on there that the bootloader plugs into. In hindsight, the smart money, what I really wish I, I knew to do would be to put a programmer header right onto my boards. When I was doing the initial breadboarding, I got confused that my lights started flickering really weird as I started um, using the sound. Once I added sound to it, suddenly the colors were getting all messed up. And it turns out that the using the tone function in Arduino will mess with the, the PWM, the pulse wave, mod, pulse wave modulation, on certain pins. And one of those pins was hooked up to one of the LED elements. So when it was playing a sound, suddenly the LED was getting a different uh, amount of current than it was supposed to be getting. So I moved the, um, the LED onto a different PWM enabled, enabled pin, and then I could uh, produce tones cleanly and have the lights be the correct colors. Um, something I'll want to do in the future, uh, every time I do a project like this, kind of like when you turn your car on and all the, the indicator lights come on so you know if a light is burnt out or not, um, I ended up putting a kind of a boot sequence into it so that when I powered it up, the uh, red, then the green, then the blue would each uh, light up for half a second so I could confirm that all three LEDs were functioning properly. And then it would just play a, a simple three-tone sound out the speaker so I could confirm the speaker was working properly. The position of the speaker holes was not ideal because the light passing through the acrylic to the engraved um, lettering, uh, instead of making it to the lettering, it would hit the holes for the speaker and then the light would be emitted from those speaker holes instead. So it kind of made the illumination from within the acrylic less than ideal. So I would probably position those differently. Next time I do some acrylic stuff, I'll be more cognizant of the flow of the light through the medium. So the first uh, couple of boards I did, I was really careful with the etching um, to make sure that it was fully etched before I removed the paint. I was overly confident uh, on the third board with how much time it would take to etch properly. And it was actually about five days later, maybe even longer, and the outside temperature had come down quite a bit. And so my basement was a lot cooler. and Or should I say my top secret laboratory was a lot cooler. And so the etching just went much slower. I didn't really consider that, and I removed the paint uh, prematurely without inspecting the board first. So I wasn't sure what size to use for the acrylic, so I just made it the same size as the circuit board. But then I found I had a really hard time figuring out how I might mount the acrylic into the box, since it was the same size. So the box actually just barely, if I kind of squeeze it the right way, I can pop the circuit board in and out. Uh, next time, I'll probably make, uh, if I was going to do it again, I would make the acrylic larger and make the box larger so that the circuit board could easily fit inside the box without any kind of mounting brackets that the acrylic 
is mounted to, interfering with the, um, the circuit board getting in and out of the box. When I sliced the box for 3D printing, um, I still had the settings in Slicer for the ankle brackets that need to be pretty heavily engineered for the feet. And so they have very thick walls and it ended up making the walls of the box completely solid. And all that ABS, not having uh, kind of gaps for the infill, um, but having it just be solid ABS really increased the amount of warping uh, force. And so it ended up, it actually delaminated some of the layers of the box. I also attempted to print at a slightly lower temperature. Everyone suggests between 220 and 240 or something for printing ABS. And I've been printing at 240. Uh, and I was like, why am I at the very top end of this acceptable range? So I printed at 230 and um, I wasn't happy with it. And since the layers delaminated, I, I bumped it back up to 240 and um, I'll probably keep it at 240 or I might even try slightly higher if it doesn't burn the ABS. Uh, something I noticed the first time that I tried to take something out of FreeCAD and move it into PyCam is that PyCam is looking for an ASCII formatted STL file. And FreeCAD, when it generates an STL, it does the binary flavor of STL file. But if you export in FreeCAD and you change the extension from STL to ASC during export and then go into File Explorer and rename that file so it's an STL file, you can then import it into PyCamp. Just from having the box sitting on my floor for the last week while I've been editing this video, um, I've already experienced a significant benefit at about 2.30 when it says, hey, you've got two hours until, um, I, you just can't help but notice that instead of being white and blue and breathing, it's uh, the green and uh, a different color green. And so the box is a very different color and it's like, oh yeah, payment's coming up. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that if you came here to learn something, you learned something. If you came here to be entertained, you found it entertaining. Uh, I'm looking forward to the next video. I'll probably be tackling the hips on Nephilim, which are going to be really complicated. I'm intimidated. I'm always intimidated. I never know how it's going to work until I do it. And it's really scary to say, I'm going to make a video of these. This is what I'm about to do, not knowing how it will work. Um, and I keep telling myself, like, there's no pressure. This is for fun. Okay, we're going to go on this fun journey together. And I don't have to be concerned that it didn't work or um, it wasn't impressive. Like, it can just be enjoyable um, to walk the path regardless of where we end up. I'm Josh Whitman with Whitman Technological. I love science and I hope you do too. <laughs> He's tooling around. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she's like, what? What the heck? That one's really funny. <laughs>